Titus stood motionless in the vast chamber of the primary fortress on the Baal Secundus planet, surrounded by several companies of blood angels, each one adorned in full battle armor. The room, a testament to the might of the blood angels, echoed with the weighty silence of anticipation. Titus, now a seasoned warrior, meticulously reviewed the events of the past few days within the confines of his mind. The looming threat of the Tyranid swarm hung heavily in the air, and the urgency of returning to battle with bolstered forces resonated within Titus's consciousness. However, against the backdrop of the imminent danger, orders had arrived, commanding a different course of action. The directive was unequivocal. Cease all engagements, withdraw, and return to the bail systems, awaiting further instructions. In this moment of contemplation, Titus couldn't shake the disquieting realization that despite the perilous situation, the edict was to stay put. The strategic significance of this decision perplexed him, prompting contemplation on the overarching plan of attack. Could the Emperor, in his wisdom, allow the Tyranid swarm to roam freely across the Imperium? The nagging uncertainty lingered, shrouding the room in a palpable tension. As the call to assemble echoed through the fortress, Titus, along with his battle brothers, found themselves in a colossal room that housed a congregation of blood angels, an assembly unlike any he had witnessed before. A thousand battle brothers stood in stoic unity, clad in their iconic battle armors, a silent testament to the gravity of the impending events. The room, normally abuzz with the hum of preparation, now stood eerily silent, broken only by the occasional clinks of metal and the subdued orders as new groups of blood angels joined the assembly. At the forefront of the assembly, flanked by sanguinary guards adorned in resplendent golden armor, stood the enigmatic figure of Chapter Master Raldoron. His presence was an anomaly, for Chapter Masters typically operated at a higher echelon, overseeing the entire blood angel chapter. The lower-ranked company captains were entrusted with the command of smaller groups of space marines, Yet the sheer magnitude of the gathered force warranted the chapter master's direct involvement. Despite the imposing unity of the Blood Angels, Titus couldn't shake the foreboding unease that pervaded the room. A sense of gravitas, a premonition of something momentous, hung in the air. This was no ordinary gathering and the chapter master's grim expression only deepened the mystery. Raoul Doron, a figure of venerable age and immense respect within the chapter, stood at the forefront of a thousand battle brothers, an unusual occurrence that left Titus pondering the gravity of the situation. Surveying the silent assembly, Titus felt an uncommon vulnerability. The enormity of the gathering failed to provide solace, and an unspoken tension lingered. Something had transpired, something that had unsettled even the seasoned chapter master, Ralderon, with centuries of service to the Blood Angels, was a warrior who had weathered countless battles and emerged unscathed. The very essence of his being exuded an unyielding commitment to Primarch Sanguinius and the Emperor. As Titus's gaze swept across the room, the resonance of heavy armor gradually subsided, replaced by an almost oppressive silence. Severin, Titus's battle brother and sanguinary priest, met his gaze an unspoken understanding passing between them. The room's sudden quietude captured their attention, and their eyes collectively rose toward the chapter master, who ascended a few steps, presiding over the assembly from the elevated pedestal. The amplified voice of Raldoran pierced the silence, filling the room with echoes of distant chaos. Images materialized, depicting frenzied battles among Astartes legions. The distress signal from the Death Guard Legion unraveled a tale of rebellion on the former Imperium world of Istvan III, orchestrated by the renegade governor Vardis Prahl. The Istvan system, strategically vital, witnessed a joint campaign by four Space Marine Legions under the command of Warmaster Horus. Over 200,000 Astartes assembled for the operation, converging on Istvan III to quell the rebellion. Yet, Unbeknownst to the Loyalists, Horus has been corrupted by the malevolent forces of Chaos and was already plotting betrayal. The revelation where Horus has used the Life Eater virus against both the human population as well as the deployed Astartes 
added a sinister layer to the unfolding narrative. This was a deadly virus, which always would render a planet uninhabitable and kill every single living being on that planet. Horus, once a stalwart Primarch leading the Great Crusade, had succumbed to the insidious whispers of chaos. A clandestine deployment of virus bombs marked the treacherous act, with Horus informing his loyal troops to seal doors to safeguard against infection. The ships, once poised for battle, turned their destructive force upon the planet, obliterating all life and leaving behind a desolate wasteland. The chapter master's presence weighed heavily as he recounted the gruesome details. The assembled Remembrancer Order on the Vengeful Spirit bore witness to the atrocity. Horus's declaration of seizing the Golden Throne and the subsequent extermination of the Remembrancers painted a harrowing picture. The virus devoured hundreds of Astartes and even the rebellious Istvanians, leaving nothing but a sludge of death. A single blast followed, creating a firestorm that scorched the world, reducing it to a dark, lifeless husk. Despite Horus's meticulous plan, several of the loyal Astartes survived, warned by the Emperor's children, Saul Tarvitz. Elements of the World Eaters, Sons of Horus, Death Guard, and Emperor's children sought refuge, surviving the firestorm in bunkers and sealed locations. Horus, angered by this unforeseen resistance, reluctantly turned against the surviving loyalists on the planet, unwilling to display weakness to his brothers. But patience wore thin, and Horus, determined to eliminate any remaining defenders, initiated a relentless bombardment. The surviving Astartes, resilient in their resistance, faced annihilation under the barrage of destruction. As Raldoran delivered this chilling account, the gravity of the situation bore down on the Blood Angel's assembly. The very foundation of brotherhood among Astartes was threatened, as Horus's heresy unraveled a tale of betrayal and fratricide. The chapter master's call to purge the heretic resonated through the silent chamber, challenging the loyalty of every space marine present. The room, hushed in contemplation, held its collective breath. The bonds forged in the crucible of war now faced an unprecedented trial. To turn weapons against brothers in arms, to raise arms against those who had once stood shoulder to shoulder, was an agonizing prospect. The chapter master's watchful eyes surveyed the blood angels, awaiting the internalization of the staggering news. The strength of Astarte's loyalty, a foundational pillar, stood at the precipice of an uncharted abyss. Titus, amidst the solemn assembly, maintained a fixed gaze on the chapter master. Each Primarch, while equal in the eyes of the Emperor, possessed a unique essence. Traditional lore spoke of Horus, the first Primarch found, favored by the Emperor during the Great Crusade, bestowed with the title of War Master. Horus, with unparalleled strength and leadership, was once considered the linchpin for victory in the crusade, the emperor's most beloved son. Yet the recent events had transformed this formidable primarch into the greatest threat to the Imperium of Man. Titus, grappling with the enormity of the revelation, understood the monumental shift in the balance of power. As the evening unfolded, the lingering words of Horus captured in the recording echoed in his ears. I will see the galaxy freed once more, and if I cannot save it from your failure, Father, then let the galaxy burn. Let the seas boil. Let the stars fall. So it takes the last drop of my blood. I will see the galaxy freed once more. And if I cannot save it from your failure, Father, then let the galaxy burn. The ominous declaration hung in the air, a harbinger of the impending chaos. The unraveling narrative laid bare the treachery within the ranks of the Astartes an insidious corruption that threatened to engulf the Imperium in a galaxy-wide conflict. Titus, a warrior of unwavering dedication to the Emperor and Primarch Sanguinius, 
felt the weight of responsibility settling upon his shoulders. As the chapter master's voice echoed through the vast chamber, Titus sensed the impending storm, a turbulent era where Astartes would be forced to turn their weapons against brethren. The loyalty that bound Astartes in brotherhood would be tested in the crucible of civil war. Amidst the somber atmosphere, Titus couldn't help but recall the bonds forged in the crucible of the Segmentum Ultima sector battles. A strong connection had blossomed between him and Severin, his battle brother and sanguinary priest. The shared trials and victories had woven a tapestry of camaraderie, forming a bond that transcended mere brotherhood. Severin's approving look conveyed a silent acknowledgement, a shared understanding of the challenges that lay ahead. The room, now shrouded in an almost mystical stillness, became a stage where the destinies of Astartes intertwined with the echoes of betrayal and loyalty. The chapter master, a stoic figure at the forefront, observed the reactions of the Blood Angels, the call to arms against their once brethren, a staggering proposition hung in the air. The loyalty of Astartes, a force that had conquered worlds and faced unspeakable horrors, now faced an internal conflict that transcended the battlefield. As the chapter master's voice resonated, amplified by communication systems, the room transformed into a tableau of unwavering resolve. The images displayed chaotic scenes of Astarte's legions locked in bitter conflict, torn apart by the heresy that gripped the galaxy. The very fabric of brotherhood among the Emperor's sons unraveled, setting the stage for a tragic chapter in the annals of the Imperium. The revelation of Horus's heresy and the impending civil war painted a bleak picture. Primarchs, once beacons of hope, had succumbed to darkness, leading legions astray. The heretical forces, once part of the Imperium's might, now threatened to plunge the galaxy into a maelstrom of bloodshed and treachery. Titus, amidst the sea of his battle brothers, wrestled with conflicting emotions. The loyalty to Primarch Sanguinius and the Emperor remained steadfast, an unyielding anchor amid the storm of betrayal. The chapter master, with an imperceptible nod, signaled the imperative to prepare for battle. The ensuing conflict, an unparalleled struggle for the soul of the Imperium, demanded unwavering determination. The room, a crucible of emotions, echoed with the resolute voices of the Blood Angels as they affirmed their commitment to purge the heretic. The chapter master, a bastion of authority, observed the collective response. The bonds among Astartes, though tested, remained unbroken. Titus, amid the sea of resolute faces, pondered the unfolding narrative. The duty to eliminate heresy within their own ranks weighed heavily. The loyalty that had bound Astartes in brotherhood now faced its most arduous trial as the Imperium stood on the precipice of a civil war that threatened to engulf the galaxy in the flames of betrayal. The unity among Astartes, a force that had once been a beacon of hope, now stood fractured by the heresy of War Master Horus. The looming civil war, where Astartes would be forced to turn their weapons against their brethren, stood as a testament to the dire straits of the Imperium. The Chapter Master's call to arms, a clarion call amidst the silence, reverberated through the chamber. The Blood Angels, their resolve unbroken, prepared to face the impending storm with unwavering determination. As the Chapter Master concluded his address, the room echoed with the collective resolve of the Blood Angels. The specter of civil war loomed large, but the warriors of Baal stood ready. The intricate dance of loyalty and betrayal played out on a galactic stage would test the mettle of Astartes like never before. I will see the galaxy freed once more, and if I cannot save it from your failure, Father, then let the galaxy burn. The chilling words reverberated through the mind of Titus continuously. He met the reassuring look of Severin and the rest of his battle brothers, his faith reborn. One thing was clear. The Blood Angels will stand with their Primarch Sanguinius and the Emperor. The chapter will endure.